Well, hello, hello to Misha. So nice to finally get to meet you and chat with you. So why don't you give us your stats? I think everybody wants to know the numbers and where you had surgery and all of that. All the things. Yeah. So um, I had surgery. I live in New Hampshire. So I had surgery at Whitworth Douglas Hospital by Dr. Dr. Havalashkis. And so my stat, I'm sorry, we're going to have a surprise appearance. Oh, I have a black kitty too. Oh, yeah. So you know how intrusive they can be. Oh, they're such lovers. They're lovers. They are. They are. So my highest weight was 302 pounds in July. I started my journey through the process. My starting weight was 267. And today I stand at 227 pounds. Wow. So you've lost 74 pounds. Was all of that in the pre-op diet? So how much did you lose in the pre-op diet compared to after your surgery? Sure. So my starting weight, I, I personally classify my starting weight as my surgery weight. So between July at 302 pounds to my surgery date, that was September 14th. So I lost, I was started at 267. So I've lost about 40 some odd pounds within my pre-op. And then the 30 some odd pounds has been since gastric. Wow. So you just had surgery. I just had surgery. And like I'm, how, how many days has it been? Um, Very recent. So, yes. It's been almost two months. Oh. It's definitely more recent. But I've been within the community. I mean, my mom had the lap bands. My father-in-law had gastric and my grandfather-in-law had the sleeve. So I'm very familiar with the world. But I've also been dabbling in in addictive behaviors. And for me personally, I know eating addiction is where my flaw is and where I need to work on. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what led me to, to my therapist setting and where I am today. Well, and, and so what kind of problems have you had as far as after surgery, as far as addiction, have you noticed that you've sort of moved over to, you know, other things? Sure. So I don't see any of that codependence or that carpentimentalized, but I do notice that I am a lot more emotional when it comes to eating. Mm -hmm such as the binge eating and not being able to in my in my family. That, yeah yes soothe that need almost and of course that is that addictive behavior and that mindset my family we are we love food we love to eat that's how as a culture we belong that we bond and just not being able to participate or not being able to try everybody's meal during get togethers, it's definitely starting to be a little bit more heartbreaking because I, yes, it is. And I think we all go through it. I mean, it's, it's a lifestyle change that we knew was coming, but we didn't know at what magnitude it is until we're there. And I think that's one of the hardest things. Yeah. And so it's, it is really weird how right after you have surgery, all of those issues are brought to the surface, emotional eating using it as a crutch, as a, hey, it's Saturday, I need a treat. All these things kind of come to the surface of so food addiction, body dysmorphia, all of these things sort of float to the surface and you're kind of stuck and you have to deal with it because you don't have food anymore to um, soothe yourself. Well, know, I, can only speak cover. I can only speak for myself, but I know that I was justifying what I was eating. Um, and I know you you did a little bit of those examples, such as it's Saturday, I need a treat. Mm -hmm. uh, I was definitely doing those those justifications, and that's part of that that addiction behavior and just trying not to bring to what is the surface. So, I mean, even though I'm a therapist, I am working with my therapist on what these underlying needs are and why food is such a big culture need for me. Yeah, and and. What are some of your, oh gosh, what's, what's your solutions for that? Like how, how have you dealt with those lately? Sure. I have to talk to your therapist, like 
some some good answers to how to cope with those sure so situations. some of my mechanisms um, so i i have a lot so i've started jogging and i use jogging as a very loose term i am like a swift walker which like is fast i i do that yeah, i'm like, like barely a- got my stride but it's like slow dog yeah. It's like more so my hands are going mm-hmm. and then my feet are hoping to catch up. Uh, <laughs> but we'll work it in there. We're working on it. I think, nice. and I I still, to this day, kind of hate fitness. I don't have the best relationship with exercising, um, but hopefully it will come. But my coping mechanisms are, I can now do things with my son. I have a two-year-old son. I can go out. If he wants to run around, I can do that now. Since I've lost 74 pounds, I feel good. I can climb the play structures and Chuck E. Cheese if I want to. I can be present for my son. And that's what's getting me through the hard days where I can't eat as much as my brain wants me to. Yeah. And and that is really the most important because I can't tell you how much I missed of my children's childhood. uh, Going to the beach or to the water park and not wanting to get in the water. like. Because I don't have a bathing suit that you don't want to put yourself. I mean, I, for me, I, I struggled really hard, hard with those issues. So, yeah, I totally get it. But it's, it's a total shift now for you. I think that you could be able to do those things. It's super awesome to, to have that in your life now. Yes. And be comfortable with your body and feel good about it. You know? Yes. So that I'm still working on being more comfortable in my body. And I mm-hmm. think that's the thing that also we all struggle with because although people tell me I look great and I, I've seen a scale and my numbers have dropped, I don't feel any different. And I think that's what we all, you know, looking at the mirror. But that also comes with that body dysmorphia. Mm-hmm. And being a therapist, I know on the other side of the spectrum, those with eating disorders such as bulimia and anorexia, they also have the same mindset. So that's something that we share across the board on the two polar opposites. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's really almost like, I want to say validating, knowing that we're not alone in this aspect because yeah. it's a niche in the bariatric world. Yeah. And that is pretty much um, the pretty much overall goal for everybody no matter what weight or size you are, is to feel good in the body that you're in. So it, if you lose 20 pounds or 100 pounds, whatever it is, that number really does matter as long as we can feel good in the body that we have is pretty, pretty much the overall goal for everybody, right? And I've actually, I've been looking at a few companies because I am very strong on women empowerment and just being comfortable in your own body. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a lot of companies such as like, at least I'm from New, New Hampshire. So like White Mountain, Beaujore. So like just doing those different photo shoots that really make you feel good. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they are a little bit more of like the scandalous photo shoots where in the bariatric community, at least for myself, I don't necessarily feel comfortable and like revealing clothes or bathing suits. And I think that's what we all kind of work on. So doing certain things like that to help promote your body and your self-love really do make a difference. And I haven't been able to get my brain there to do that just mm-hmm. yet. Me but either. I, I feel yeah. you, girl. I feel you. I, I still, I, I've never worn a pair of shorts in public. I've never worn bathing suit in public I always wear like a one piece or a bikini with the little swim shorts yep. so I just I I just I have a I, I struggle deeply you know and I think a lot of us do in that area it's it's really hard but God bless the people that can that do it I man go for it I would love to be in your shoes I would love to be that person but, you know, I totally feel you. It's, it's, but it's struggling, right? So, at least, and I can only speak for myself, but when I look at those women, they are absolutely drop dead gorgeous. They mm. may weigh 
you know, my starting weight, but they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so at what point is it their confidence that makes them beautiful? Mm -hmm. So, so why can't we, I mean, I know. Call yeah. the out black because I just said I'm not comfortable. But why not? Why can't I, we? What is it about our brain that's making us stop? I, I don't. That's 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 the question that a yeah. therapist has to make. You kind of wrap your brain around it, like it, because no one is stopping us. Our husbands love us entirely and would love us for to have that confidence. And yeah. I, I think it's just. Uh, all in our head and it's just something that we have to cope with and get past as far as and, and hopefully losing more weight and you know you know having that behind us and that that helps so it's, it, it's totally a constant struggle for everybody I think for a lot of a lot of people it's how to love yourselves and <laughs> They always tell us, even before we started the program, that your weight will change, but your mindset won't. And that's something that you need to work on. And this is just one of those one of those things that we, we need to work on, and it's not going to change. Overnight. Yeah. So, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. Tell me about your, your surgery. So you had what surgery, and how was your surgery experience? Sure. So I had gastric bypass Rue and Y, and my doctor, he... He's going to kill me if he sees this, but we're on great terms. I I had went through the process and I sat down in the room to get my final medical approval. And like a, like a surgeon that almost like a doctor now, because I know everybody kind of knows doctor now, mm -hmm. he came in and he goes, why do you want this surgery? And I, I gave him the answer. I, I've tried all these diets. Nothing's working. He goes, you just lost 40 pounds on your own. I don't like that answer. Yeah. And so yes. it really made me dig as to why this surgery is going to help. Because a lot of people go into this thinking that this is like a magic pill that anybody can take and they're going to lose weight. But it's a tool. You can easily manipulate the tool, uh, you know, to gain, regain yeah a significant amount of weight of course regain is, is normal but the significance and so so dr hevelescus is is an incredible surgeon because he he makes you think about why and give a really justified answer because it's a lifelong change i mean i am 26 years old and i'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life oh, so baby right, baby <laughs> You're such a baby, but I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you for, for taking this huge leap because, you know, I mean, a, a lot of people, if you talk to them, they, they all say they wish they would have done it sooner. And when my kids were little, we heard about it. Both me and my husband at the time were hugely overweight. My, my highest weight was 210, no, 211, which doesn't sound like much, but I'm 4'11". Yeah. So I'm super short. And so, and we heard about it and we were scared. I was like, oh, I don't know. It seemed like such a huge leap, but I yeah. wished, I yeah. wished I could go back and uh, do it again. I'd go ahead and do it earlier. So good for you for doing that yeah. when your kids are young. It's, I think it's going to change your life. It already yeah. has. I mean, I I want to say I'm only down seventy pounds, but but that's significant. And that's seventy significant. pounds. Whatever. I know that's, that's like a small child. <laughs> but it was thirty pounds. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I lost my whole toddler. Yeah. One of those cognitive distortions. We we try to minimize what we've lost because there's always so much more that we could. Lose. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I'm already feeling such reward. I mean. I was able to climb a play structure with my kiddo who he's at that age. So he wouldn't have been able to experience it unless an adult was with him. And I was mm -hmm. able to provide those experiences with him. So it's definitely making a difference already. So I'm very thankful. Yeah. So, and I was going to ask, did you have any complications when you had your I surgery or did it go smoothly? Knock on wood, everything went smoothly. I followed the plan to a T, except for 
I did cheat on my husband's oh. birthday. I had a tiny bit of cake, but it was sugar-free cake because that was one of those times that I was feeling pretty low because everybody was experiencing my husband's birthday and I was feeling more of like a left out syndrome. Okay. Where do you get sugar-free cakes? I've never seen a sugar-free Ooh. cake. Yes. So we have something called Market Basket and they do a little tiny sugar-free cake. It does have about nine grams of sugar alcohol in it. So, but it's, it's sugar-free. So, or oh, no wow. sugar. so it's, yeah, it's, it was great. So, so, just, so it's, you need a little, a little something, you know, you know, and if you want it, you can have it. I, I don't think there's, cause I'm almost five months on November the 10th, I'll be five months. And so I've kind of gotten to where if there's something there and I want it, I'll take a bite of it. Cause honestly, you could only take two or three bites of anything. Right. Yeah. So, and then you're kind of ruined for 30 minutes because you can't eat anything, eat anything else or drink anything else. So if you want it, just have, have a taste of it. Don't feel like you're not participating and if, and it's okay. It's not gonna make or break anything. It's just, that's how I feel about it. That's what my dietitian said. She said, have a little piece of it, get it out of your mind. Cause otherwise we get consumed with it. Think about it and think about it. And so yeah, that, that's fine. And a sugar-free cake. I would eat the whole, I would have tried to eat the whole thing if I could, but can't. Oh yeah. I was still on that liquid and that mush diet. Oh, you were on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got you. So you were one of those people that measured everything and did everything perfectly. Uh, strong. No, I would say like, I, mm. I never, I never recorded right. anything. I just don't have time. And I know that's kind of like a lame excuse. Yeah. Cause you always have to make time for your health is what I've realized. But I got in my protein. I did have a stall because I was not getting enough fluid in which was a little bit heartbreaking. I mean, you know, I just went through this major surgery. I only lost 12 pounds. Where's the rest of it? But so I definitely should have recorded, but I definitely followed my plan as far as like drinking liquids when I needed to and then upgrading to stage two, three, and four. Yeah, I I struggled hard with trying to not try to control the situation. Like, oh, I can, let me just grab my drink. And I didn't really measure every little thing. I just put them in a little cup oh, and just kind of did it that way. But I definitely was not perfect in any way. I don't and I still that- am not, you know, I, I got my little dopio coffee thing. And and I, I got mine and I and know it's like, it's, in well, the- it's called coffee. I think they call it coffee, coffee, they call it. I have just decaf coffee with a chocolate protein shake. So it's like a mocha caramel. Yeah. Really yeah. good. Yes. So you, what is your goal? Do you have a goal number or do you have a, a number that you want to get to and how much weight do you want to? Yes. So my, my goal weight is 150 pounds. My my surgical goal weight is 180, but my non-scale victory, that's something that I'm really looking forward to. I want to go skydiving mm-hmm. and there is a weight requirement with skydiving. There is. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. My son and my husband went skydiving. Both of them are in, in the military. So mm-hmm. my son wanted to do a be a parachute rigger and he'd signed up and going to Italy and but he'd never been parachuting and I was like well we've got to go before you go because what if you don't like it but of course he loved it and that's what he does so good for you um that was, that was my brother-in-law my brother-in-law joined never jumping out of a, a helicopter and now he's he was airborne and there you go uh-huh to so he was like, why would you do that? I was like, look who's, look who's talking. You made it your whole career. Yeah, that's, I'm scared of heights. So I know I could fall. I think that would, but that's the ultimate. 
that's exciting. So that, that, that's good. So do you have like goals for like every so many pounds? Do you have like a, a reward, like getting your nails done or certain um, things like that? Is that one of yours, a skydiving? So I, I want to try to start a token economy where you get that reward and you mm-hmm. stop doing that negative um, for, because today I, I jumped on the scale because that's one of my really bad habits is jumping on the scale every day because I'm still in that mind, that, that mentality where I'm losing a pound almost every day mm-hmm. uh, from surgery. So I jumped on the scale today. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm in a <laughs> stall. I'm so jealous. Oh, no, no. I know. No, I will be there. I will be there. Oh, so, man. A matter of time. And so I gained a pound from yesterday. But yesterday, I also, I challenged myself and I walked, jogged eight miles. It was kind of funny. I, I went to my husband's work and I was so thankful to see him and just get in the car and drive home. I could not go any further. So I was a little frustrated this morning. So it's just, it's funny how that, that like mindset and that scale really does impact your day and your mood for the day. Yeah. So, so I guess when you asked me about my addictive behaviors and whether or not they fixated on something else, you know what, thinking about it, it may be the scale. I might have fixated and, and moved that count addictive behaviors. So sorry, going back. So Yes, I do want to start like that token economy, but I also want to stop fixating on the number. You got to be careful with the scale because I think if you overconsume on that number and then you go up a pound, like you said you did, and then you, because you fixated on that number, then you walked further and you exercised longer probably than you would have, then, you know, that's going to put pressure on your body you know what I mean that's gonna change you so 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 if you're losing weight like a pound or you're gradually losing great don't change what you're doing and definitely don't start working out too hard without giving your body time to acclimate to the calories in calories out or whatever whatever the protein make sure you're getting enough protein and all of that so just it's it's yeah that that's a, a tough one the scale excuse me i had to cough but i'm hoping to do a half marathon at the end of the month so i'm um, i've been slowly creeping up i know but i have the opportunity to kind of bow out at a 5k because it's 5k and half marathon in one so so my goal is to go are you gonna run or walk or what are you gonna do as a 5k or walk that that pretend jog that's that, yeah yeah, yeah. My, uh, my meaningful, the, the meaningful pace. You just like, yeah, I got you. My, my husband, he's so funny. We met in high school and he played football. So every time he, he jogs, he calls it, he calls it the, the fat man jog because he only moves his arms. Uh-huh. And so we're also correcting that, um, those words because fat is associated with that derogatory term. So, so, but that, that's that mindset that I'm at is just, just swinging those arms from what yeah. my husband told me to do. Um, so that's also what's going on in my house is just like learning how to do those, those cognitive distortions and yeah. challenge yourself along with the verbiage that we use. Mm-hmm. Because also in the bariatric community, and like I said, I can only speak for myself. I tend to use a lot of humor when it comes to my weight to try to, try to like deflect that I feel insecure about it. So we would use that term fat and what have you. So, so that's definitely something that at least I'm working on as far as my own mentality. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I think the, the, the mindset of changing from before surgery where I think you're food driven. I think we all are as far as we wake up, we think about what we're going to eat. We eat it and then we feel guilty. So we don't eat till way later. And then we eat again and then we feel guilty. And then we go to bed promising ourselves, hey, tomorrow's going to be a better day. Like I'm going to do it tomorrow. And then you wake up and your inner bitch. And we all have that inner bitch, right? 
who tells us, oh, just one, or we can, you did great. Today. You can have that, whatever, whatever. And so it's, it's really hard to break that, that mindset and, or even those thoughts that we or behaviors we had before to total, cause you're like a total different person. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, it's, it's so hard to, like, it just, it hits you fast. I mean, as soon as you have surgery, it's like, once you're like the first week, you're like starving. Right. I like I, 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 I felt like I was dying. I felt like I was like literally slowly dying. I couldn't eat. I couldn't, like I had such a hard time. I felt like I was dying. So it's really hard. And then everything comes to the surface and it's like, whoa, it's not just about food. Yeah. yeah. So, so mine, I, I could not eat. I felt really nauseous every time I took a sip. I got to a point where I, I definitely needed to, to do more of the fluid than the protein just to keep myself alive. And it, it's definitely gotten better since. Um, but I think beforehand, I, I never felt guilty when it came to food. I never felt like, like I should deprive myself of, of food because it was culture norm to be thin. My whole family is, is larger people. So, so it was always just like a culture thing that we just ate and we're bigger people. So I just, yeah, it was, it was more difficult for me to stop and realize that this is a negative behavior that, that was going on and kind of break away because unfortunately my mom had the lap band. They no longer do the lap band because it erodes into the stomach, which unfortunately happened to my mother. And so she, she put on some of that weight back. So it was always just like that, that culture thing that it's just food. So I never felt guilty about what I ate because it was always appropriate in the culture dynamic. No, I got you. So let me ask you another question. So how, how has your relationship with your husband, has that changed or is, is he overweight or how, how is, or is, is he like my husband who's six, two and two twenty and perfect? So, <laughs> well, of course my husband's perfect, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. We have to say that or they get a little offended. No, my husband is, is fantastic. We are both overweight. He is about five, eight, um, close to like a, like a high three hundreds, but he, he's a laborer. He works on his feet. He is so strong and such like just a, just a bigger built man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my relationship with my husband is... Does he have like a mustache, like those, yeah, the those beard, beard. guys with the beard? That's sexy yeah. too, though. Mine's in the military, yeah. so he's got a crew cut. Huh? And he's all muscles and beautiful, but there's hairy men too with the mustache. That's, that's sexy too. That's that's just as gorgeous. And so so you have one of those husbands. I do. And oh, okay. He- he is supportive. We're mm. starting to get a little bit, because they say that your dynamic of your relationship changes when one of you goes through a major life change. Mm. Um, and although it's early, I think that we're starting to hit that that block almost, mm. um, where some I'll ask him how I look for the day, because you know you try on new clothes and nothing fits me, and mm-hmm. and. He, God love him. He's one of those men that is brutally honest. So he'll be like, "Oh, your, your bum's a little flat in that." So although oh, no. he's taking it in a very <laughs> positive way, when you have that body dysmorphia, yeah, it wants to shift your mindset and you tend to fix on it. So we have been able to have those open conversations about, "Hey, do you mind not saying that?" And that it affects me this way which is definitely helping our relationship. And I know it's only going to be a progress from here because when one of you has a major life change, it's yeah, just... And we're so emotional right now. Like I could burn a house down. Like I'm so emotional. Yeah. Like I tell his name's Doug. I tell Doug all the time. It's like, like if I put a new outfit or new something on, like, I mean, I need that reassurance like you look great baby or you look like I I'm, I mean we're so emotional like needy right now after the surgery I think our hormones are kind of like 
out of whack. And it's, it's a struggle emotionally, I think, also. But yeah. But that also comes with that mindset. Like, we don't see the changes, so we look for validation from others. Mm -hmm. And so our husbands are our biggest support, at least. I, I love my husband. He's always been my biggest supporter. And so mm -hmm. just getting that validation from him really does make a difference. Because although in July, I was a size 24, and today I sit at a size 14. Ah. Wow. So how much money are you spending? Are you doing the smart thing? People say, go to Goodwill. just Buy something at Goodwill and don't spin. Don't go crazy because you're going to be a size four or a size eight or yeah. whatever one day, not too yeah. long, far from now. So I how's am, the shopping going? I am very thankful that my mom saved everything. So when she started going through that lap band and started minimizing her clothing, she saved everything. And she had lap bands probably 10 years ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So she saved everything. So I that's have a awesome. bit of clothes. Wow. See, that's a good Very mom right there. That's gosh, a good yeah. mom. She's incredible. Yeah. That's, that's great. So, so she's been really helpful and supported, supportive to you. And she has, she, she can identify what I'm going through because she's been through it. Yeah. Um, however, she's a little bit more detached because the lap band did fail. So, so she's able to eat that sugars and with lap bands, they don't have dumping syndrome, like gastric bypass does. So, so she's, she's been a little bit more detached from what I'm specifically going through. Cause she's never necessarily been through the gastric bypass portion. So her, her love language is gifting and she loves bringing snacks and treats and food. She's like a, like a little Italian. That's a mom. That's a mom. I mean, it's all moms do that. You go visit. Like, I got to pack up something for the kids to take. It's like, yeah. do, you, do you need some groceries? Do you need this? Do you need some protein shakes? Do you need this? That's that's a mom. That's a mom. That's a good mom. Yeah. So yeah. She's, she, I'm very thankful. She used to bring like a cheesecake or a chocolate cake or because she's a baker. So she loves to bake and she can't eat it. So she kind of just like gives it to, to whomever and wrote uh -huh. a clothes near her so actually last night i'm very thankful we came home a little bit later from work and she brought me a a corn chowder that was low sodium and the gastric bypass approved so that that dynamic has changed for for the better and i'm very thankful for that that's good that's good yes no no i like that so so how is okay so you had your surgery it went well went well right Douglas, yep. Okay. And then, so you're doing good. So um, how's your food going? Like, are you having a hard time getting your fluids and protein? So it depends on if I remember it, to be completely honest, because I don't have that hunger sensation anymore. And so I guess that's the norm for some of us. Which is, is weird, we which is weird. It's so weird. What the hell? I don't even get why we don't have the hunger pain. But if I don't eat, like if I need protein, I'll get like uh, nauseous and my stomach hurts. Like I'm sick to my stomach. And then I'm like, oh, I need protein. I need to eat. Yep. You know? And you eat a little bit from what I've noticed. Like when you're in that like almost like survival mode where your mm -hmm. stomach is like starting to crunch, I can only take like a little bit at a time. Yeah. You took I'm too long. Yeah. You took too long. Yeah. Your yeah, body's so like, no, uh -uh, no, ma'am. It's 10 o'clock, 10.30, and I'm still, like, waiting to take my multivitamin. Granted, they are disgusting, and I don't know how I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, doing the chewa balls. Oh, my God. Well, do you know what I did? And, and it's working. I have gone um, to my doctor, and I did get checked. The only two things I was low on was vitamin D and iron. Of course, my ferritin is really low. My hair is falling out. Like, shit. It just it ha it happens. It's okay. But um, it is called Patch Aid. Okay, I've heard of that. And I just, it's like a little sticker. And I, people say put it on the back of your arms. But I think it rubs off and it comes off for me. So I stick them on my stomach. And it's like a little sticker. And it just stays on there. And all of my 
vitamins are great. Everything's great. And I don't take, I just started a supplement with the, of course, the vitamin D and the ferritin because mine, that's not going, that needs some support. But definitely look into that if you hate taking the pills because I'm a, a baby and if it tastes like shit, I'm not eating it. I will spit it out. I'm sorry. I have to like hold my nose and take a bit of coffee while I do it because it's just so chalky. Um, oh, no. Yeah, no, I can't. No, I'm not going to eat it if it tastes like yeah. So de- definitely look into it. And it's like for a month prescription. And, and, you know, what's so neat about it is they have a section on there. If you had bypass, this is the package you need to get. If you had oh, wow. sleeve, you need this one. R&Y. I think r is on there. I, I don't know. But it has different packages specifically for that bariatric surgery so we definitely look into that and it was like 13 dollars a month i mean it's not and they ship it to you and it's you put a patch on every day you have to leave it on there minimum eight hours is that's how because it's slowly but yeah you definitely ought to look into it i know i'm so you froze i'm super excited because i'm not sure if you've if you've saw it, but East to West, we lost and has like this like big launch. And so they're launching it tomorrow. So it's actually going to be something called Berry Nation. And it's, um, it's a website where it's like a, it's a subscription a little bit, mm-hmm. um, a little bit like a, sub- a subscription for an online, but they, you have access to like all of these experts. So you have therapists on staff, dietitians on staff, MDs on staff, 24 hours a day. So oh, like, wow, is, is that a podcast? What is East to West? East to West does have that podcast feature, but they're actually rebranding to Berry Nation starting tomorrow. And, and so that Berry Nation is that community based. It's almost like a, like a Facebook where they do like live events, um, like virtually they do like meetups. Nice. What I love about it is the experts. So say my doctor isn't available or I don't feel comfortable talking to to my staff about things like that, which thankfully I don't, but I know that some people do because they've reached out to me. So you can just ask an anonymous question on there and get answers from an MD or a therapist or a dietitian. So I just, I thought that was a really cool thing that our community needs. Oh yeah, we, we, we definitely need help because there's there's so many people like me I had my husband is stationed in San Angelo Texans right now and it's like a small town mm-hmm. uh, and I don't know anyone other than of course my nurse doctor dietitian or the people that go to my one month meeting you may have two people you may have six people and that's all I, but I don't know anybody in my daily life that, that like has had bariatric died. surgery. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of hard because you don't have anybody to talk to. You don't have anybody to ask questions like, Hey, I threw up like foamy stuff. What is that? Um, what does that so mean? Or just and, questions. And it can be terrifying if you feel like you, you don't have anybody. And I know there are some support groups on Facebook. But I, I see that they're a little bit more judgmental. And of course, it's just depending on who's on there and and everybody always has a say. And there always has to be a Karen. And so this is this is actually monitored um, by the experts. And the experts, 90% of them have been through gastric bypass or sleep. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Well, remember, it launches tomorrow. So this so is called Berry Nation. Yeah. Berry Nation. But I am actually, I was staffed to be one of the experts as a therapist for the pre-op portion. But I'm also a gastric bypass patient. So not only am I the expert for the pre-op, but I'm also a patient who can actively participate in these these groups and these cohorts. And I know myself, I am hosting a support group every other week. But we're hoping to do a support group at least once once a day or a few times a week because you never know. One day you could have a great day, but the next hit you're you're yeah. growing up foamy stuff. So yeah. you know, having that support and having just that community base. Wow, that is so we'll have to go ahead and 
check that out and go ahead and put that in the show notes for people to go check it out. And are okay, are you on Instagram, TikTok? Do you have your yeah. accounts you want to share? So I'm not very tech savvy. So my dietitian actually recommended that I do an Instagram to just have an open book. And so although my Instagram isn't necessarily like PC in a way of like, I'm just speaking my yeah. mind about what's happening with me. And it's yeah. so just validating to just yeah. throw it all out there. Like today was a shitty day and here's why. So if you want to see the good, the bad, the ugly, my Instagram is time for a change. Ruin why? Because it was time for a change for myself, my family, and to be present for my child. Oh, that seems... I know. How corny. It's like I'm a therapist or something. I love that. I love that. I am I'm actually a retired substance abuse counselor. Oh, got um, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Was, yeah. Yeah. So I have my master's degree in counseling also. So, I mean, I get it. That's cute, though. Mine's just... It is Chancellor Diaries. I was trying to think of a cute name. There's some cute names out there. I can't. Or I don't know. I haven't really found anything that. I mean, it's really hard to think of something that's cute. Yours is cute though. Yours oh, is cute. My, my favorite, and she's really big on TikTok, but Sleeve Britney alone. Because of the oh Britney. oh oh I, my god, hands down my favorite. But that's so cute. I saw one the other day. Oh man, I'm too old. I'm not going to remember on the fly like that. But it, yeah, there's some cute ones out there. There's some cute, cute stuff out there. But yeah, so we are actually also planning on. I am also an event planner, and so I've done events. I mean, I have like years of event planning and wow. for charities, nonprofits, breast cancer, tons of. Of things like that. So I am also planning to do events in the spring and we have some fun things lined up and it's going to be super cool because I, I definitely think people want a live show and have some fun. And while we're in this journey, trying to find ourselves who that person is there. She's always been there. She hasn't left, but we just need to find her. I think. And so I'm, I'm super excited on what's to come. And then there's also the Bariatric Society. Have you heard of them? Yes, they have their event this weekend. This or weekend. Next weekend. Next weekend yeah. yep. I totally missed it, but I wish I would have caught it in time. I would have totally gone. But yeah, so I mean, I'm, you know, I'm our, excited. Um, our doctor who is within Berry Nation is actually has his job Marty and they're going to be going skydiving this weekend. So you might, you might run into them if anybody's going, but you know, it's, you're doing great things for our community and our community needs this type of support. So thank you for all you do for, for this community. And even just me telling my story is definitely more therapeutic for, for my journey and knowing yeah. that we're all on the right page and, and thank you. It's, and, it's exciting. It, it's exciting that We'll get to talk to new people because I'm, I'm, I'm hungry for information too, you mm -hmm. know, and everybody who's pre-op, I, I think we all sort of get on the internet and we search bariatric stories yes. and we all want to hear everybody's story. And especially if they're right around the same timeline as ours, they're three months out or one month pre-op or whatever. And it's, it's exciting to be able to listen to other people and hear their story. There's, there's something comforting by that, I think, to okay. feel like, hey, I'm not the only one. And, oh, she has that too. And that's how she dealt with it. And give people ideas and inspiration. I think it's, it's exciting. It's exciting well, for everybody. Really beneficial. And I know you have been doing it because I've you know, been stalking your website a little bit. But just meeting people where they at, making sure that you get all aspects, because I feel like even now, I don't necessarily remember the pre-op and like all the all of the struggles that I dealt with the pre-ops because, you know, and, you know, hopefully when I hit my, my goal weight, 
I'm not going to remember all of you remember all of the challenges that happened three months, four months. So just having that wide variety really does make a difference. Like you said, meeting them where they're at. Yeah, so. it's tough because I think, you know, we are, it's, it's such a, they don't really, doctors don't really prepare you. They, they had you do the counseling sessions and the dietitian sessions and, but they don't, and they tell you, Hey, this is what's going to happen. You're not going to be able to eat, but, and they show you the little cup, right? And they say, this is all you can intake. And you're like, yeah, that's great because you're a binge eater or you eat too much or a food addict or or whatever the situation and we see that little cup and we're like oh good like I'm gonna finally get help like I need help like we all know we need to stop and so but once you have surgery I think it is still it it's like oh my god no because you're not fixing the problem yeah so your body is is rejecting it and hopefully training that that new habit of how much you can intake, but you're not it's a you're not fixing the onion with all the layers. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why comfort food is a comfort. It's so traumatic. Yeah, it's it's yeah. So all the help we can get, everybody who wants to get out and throw events in your city, support groups, support each other. I think it's perfect and we, we totally need that right now I think we all do and not only that I feel like the community looking on bypass or bariatric surgery I feel like a lot of them say you're taking the easy way out I know we've all heard it before but they don't necessarily understand what else we have to do so and that's just one of those is identifying where those mental health and those components are to help just make us healthy in general. So so it's not easy for anybody that's that's interested in it. It's, it's definitely a work in progress. Oh, it is. It is. And so here's a question. Have you had any hair loss problems? I just forgot to ask you that. Yeah. So is so your hair no, fully not yet. Honestly, like you'll probably see it. I only wash it once a week because that's what my stylist told me to do. Um, so knock on wood, not yet, but I'm definitely like trying my everything, but I know these things are going to happen. So, but yeah, it you know, sucks. It's, it, back. it's mine's like, this is like all I have. Um, like it's, you can't tell, but it's like super, it's just thinning. It's thinning. And I bet it that's sucks. traumatic. I was going to say, I bet that's traumatic. I mean, you're, you're a well, Wednesday. I had, okay, in 2011, I had breast cancer. And so I lost, of course, I lost all my hair. Um, and that that is traumatic. That hurts worse than the actual breast cancer. The losing your hair is harder on you emotionally. So I think this time around, my hair is thinny. I know why it's thinny. And I know that it's a thing. So I, I kind of feel hugely comforted by that knowing that this is just something that you go through it's normal it's a traumatic change shift for your body right so um and then our vitamins and hormones and all of that so i'm i'm pretty much okay but it, it's hard my skin is <clears throat> dry my hair is dry i think it's like a, it's just a hard thing to go through but we all I'm just morning. get through it we're morphing into a different person that we don't necessarily know yet, but we're going to learn to love. It's so exciting. We don't know her, but we already love her. <laughs> yes, I love that. Yeah, we don't know her, but we love her. We had to make that into a sheet, a t-shirt. <laughs> yes. don't, we don't know her, but we love her. Oh, yes. It, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What is... Do you have any questions or is there anything else you want to talk about or anything strange that's happened? Like anything strange. Do you throw up or do you shit your pants? Like something of a no. I I no, can't tell you drink. I've had dumpy. I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I've had dumpy. Like it's horrific. Not Thankfully fun. I haven't the only thing is that food does get stuck a little bit. 
what I find weird is that like I'll eat food and I, I think that like it's at my stomach already because your stomach's right by your chest bone mm -hmm. uh, with gastric bypass. And so like five minutes later, I'm like almost like ready to, to throw up because of how stuck the food is. But I thought it went down already. So that's definitely one of those areas that I'm working mm -hmm. on. It's just being more mindful when I eat. Anything weird? I think it's just like the fact that I don't, I'm literally eating to survive, no longer surviving to eat or vice versa. Like I, I'm eating to make sure that I live for another day versus mm -hmm. pre-planning those meals, thinking about what I'm having for dinner as soon as I wake up. So that, that's been strange. That's probably the strangest thing. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's weird to my mindset and like everybody else out there listening is okay, I'm going to get my coffee and I know this has 30 grams of protein in it. And I also have a drink with me at all times. Also, yeah. so it's like constantly trying to get in your fluids and constantly trying to focus on your protein and how much protein I eat. We don't even have time or stomach room for all the other crap you can eat. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> snacks, forget it. Like, I mean, at least right now, maybe when we're like a year out or a year and a half out, that's different because people start drinking or they get to have like more room or I don't know. Or once we get to maintenance, I'm sure that would be a little bit different. But right now it's just like, it's really tough. You, you kind of forget you had surgery until you eat something solid and then you're like, Whoops, or it took too big of a sip. That's my yeah. big thing. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, it's, I regret that. Yeah. Or it's like, oh man, I had two bites and you're so excited to eat. The worst feeling, I think, and this is the downside of bariatric surgery. You, you get so excited, you get your food. Like last night, I made tortilla soup, right? Mm -hmm. I love soup. It was chilly. I was like, oh my God, I'll make tortilla soup. I made it. I sat down. I was like so excited. The bowl was so pretty. I put my lactose-free fake cheese and some avocado. And I took, I ate like four, like four little spoonfuls of liquid. And then I had two bites of chicken. And then I was like done. And I was like, damn it. I didn't even get like one fourth of my soup eaten. And I was so sad because I really wanted to eat all of it. It's it yeah. so good. So that's the part that kind of sucks is that you just, you just want to eat normal stuff too. And you just can't eat a lot of it, period. Forget vegetables, right? And it's funny because that like screws with my mentality, like not being able to like finish my bowl because I just don't feel satisfied. Yeah. But like ready to like puke. Like, come in so fall, I'm ready to puke. But, like, my mentality is, like, you didn't eat everything that you wanted to. Like, yeah. you didn't eat enough. So it's just, it's weird. It's such a weird feeling. It is. It's tough. I think that's the, it's a, it's a huge transition to go from before surgery. If I went to Texas Roadhouse, I mean, you're not from Texas, but we have a place called Texas do Roadhouse. Too. Yeah. You do, too. Okay. Me so too. I would get the biggest steak. And I would get the loaded mashed potatoes and a loaded baked potato and a margarita, frozen mm -hmm. margarita with sugar on the rim. And I would literally eat like, not all of it, but like at least more than half, even, I mean, I would take a little steak home because, you know, it was a big steak, but, and now I can't, I eat a couple of bites of the steak. I kind of play with the mashed potatoes. I get one bite maybe and forget it. I'm done. Like, it's such a buzzkill, isn't it? It's like, it is. oh, they're like, when you know, I'm thinking about their buns and their butter. I oh, forget butter, that. Yeah. So much sugar, so much brown sugar. And I'm like, that's just going to make me dumb. But I have yeah. to, what's getting at least me through is realizing that I have non-skill victories coming. I'm going to be able to run with my kid and that's worth every Texas Roadhouse delicious bun and butter mm -hmm. in the okay. world. And so as corny as that sounds, like my son is worth putting down the fork and knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so you've had some amazing non-scale victories already. You're in size 14. Holy shit. 14. From, from what size again? 24. 24 to 14. Oh, my God. Well, so it's easier to buy clothes. You can you could go into any store and buy whatever you want. And wow. What does that feel like? I'm like, I'm sad. Like all of, I don't know how to shop. Like I'm wearing this dress that's four times too big for me because like I don't have any like professional clothes anymore. Like I, I'm a torrid Wayne Bryant shopper and I have to divorce my favorite stores. Well, let me tell you, my favorite store is called Loft. Have you heard of Loft? I have. That's that's pretty much all I wear. It may be for old ladies. I don't know. But it's it's just, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's simple. And that's like my favorite go-to store. But that's so exciting. Size 14. Wow. I am so happy for you. Show up anywhere. Like, I can get my bras at Walmart. Like, and we all know, like, plus size bras are like 100, 150 bucks for good ones. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lane Bryant, they're expensive. <laughs> well, so your breast shrunk, right? So, so my, my band did. What yeah. size was your breast, breast size compared to now? How sure. much did that go down? So my band went down like six inches. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So now you can go to anywhere and buy nice bras. Yes. And I don't have to spend an arm and a leg. Like I can, I can survive on just getting closed. What I will say is that I, I think we should start a business where gym clothes shrink with you. Because it's the most uncomfortable feeling when your leggings are like falling off as you're jogging on the treadmill. So I wonder how you patent that or what material that is shrinks with you. We need to call up Edna Mode from The Incredibles to make a super suit for us all. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think that that's the hardest thing is those those tights. But yeah, you're right. It, It does feel uncomfortable. I put some on for Halloween. I had some black ones and they were, they were a small and they were not tight. And I was like, son of a bitch. They still had the tag on them. And I was like, dang it. And they were already, I was like, I mean, it's a good feeling, but you kind of feel bad because shit's expensive. So definitely go to Goodwill too. Yeah. But, but can you, can you imagine like your, your size small was too big for you? Like, I that's know. incredible. I know. It's great. My boobs probably would have shrunk, but they're fake because I had breast cancer. So they're, they're not that's real. Scary. But so they won't get smaller. I mean, they might get a little bit of smaller if there's fat around. Whatever. Like, you know how we have the fat here on our yep. sides or whatever. So they may get, my cups may get a little bit smaller, but I won't lose all of my breast, but yeah, it's like, it is exciting. It's exciting. I know a lot of women struggle with that because you lose your hair, your breasts go away, your body is changing. And so those little things that used to be identifiers are no longer there. So it's just, it's, it's difficult, but it's yeah. look at how good your health is compared to what it was. It's all, it's all for a good reason. Well, you'll definitely need to keep us updated if you do your marathon, your five, when you do your 5K. That's super exciting. I love 5Ks. Those are fun. Like, you should also try to do like a mud run. They have the foam like runs or the col- color run or what are they? Yeah. So I signed up for the Tough Mudder, mudder but I got my surgery date and it was on the exact same well, my surgery was like the week before. So I was like, well, the gods are telling me I can't do this one, but I will happily do the next. So my goal this year is to do a Spartan race. The Spartan race. Exciting. So that one has like, like you have to climb the rope or crawl. And yeah, it's got like a little, oh, oh gosh, what, what, do you, what do you call obstacle course kind of 5K yeah, but run? Yeah, it's very, yeah. very tight. I should say my goal is not only to do it, but survive. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't want to be in your pancakes on the field. I think you'll do great. 
Do you want to do, they have this like zombie runs and there's people out there dressed like zombies and they chase you. Kind of so terrifying. If it's like you're running, it's like we did it one time and it's like you're trying to walk, trying to get through there. And then somebody comes running out of the woods and they're like a zombie and they come after you. And so you have like tags on your, they give you a belt and you have like four strips four or five strips and so if they catch you they pull a strip if you get all of your strips gone then you know you can still do it but you didn't complete it so you gotta not let them take your strips away so it's kind of hilarious yeah so my uh, jog might need to be improved for that (laughs) yeah they'll they'll they're quick they're quick and so that's that's kind of fun but it's so exciting the spartan run and the those are those are fun to do, and so I'm I'm happy for you, and you're yeah. doing great, and I'm excited to see where you go, and we'll definitely need to do a like in three months from now just to see where you're at. We'll do an updated yeah, episode if you want, and yeah. kind of go over it, and I think that'd be fun. Yeah, that's what's good about starting to network as far as being in the community is because I am such a baby. I'm I'm two months post-op and my body is changing every day. I can't believe you're just two months and you've already lost 74 freaky pounds. Oh my gosh. Like people, huh? Oh, I was going to say people say that, but like, I don't feel it. Like I see those little non-skill victories, but I, I step on the scale, but I don't, I don't feel it. So it's just funny. Yeah, it's, no, it's there. It's there. People will lose weight and they'll say, I lost, most people will say like, I lost a hundred and hundred pounds in my bariatric journey or 120 pounds is my bariatric journey, but you're already 74 pounds. So, I mean, you're, and you're just two months. Like that is a huge, huge accomplishment. Like that's amazing. So definitely find ways to recognize that number. Like when you get up and even though your clothes are still kind of baggy, you're still wearing some of the older stuff. Find ways to tell yourself that when you look in the mirror, like 74 pounds, like I bet that's two and a half of my children. You know what I mean? So for that 74 pounds you lost, I'm sure you can pick up your child longer now and hold them longer and a uh, jog eight miles what well uh, granted i was like about to die but like that's nothing that i would have ever been able to do four months ago ever jog to eight miles i can i can bear i can't even i think i can walk seven miles and then my feet start hurting i'm like okay i'm done i'm done dude <laughs> but to jog seven miles my goal is to be able to jog and do a 5K of like jogging, like running, but you know, like my face running, which is like a slow yeah. jog. That sense. Always the arms. Yeah, you got to propel. Faster. Yeah. And so that that's the fact that you did that and you're so early on is, I mean, if most people don't even try to introduce any kind of exercise until they're a little later out, but if you can do it, now and your doctor says it's okay and your dietitian or whatever then man that is a huge accomplishment that you're we all, have, we all have our different scales i mean most people can like do their fluid or their protein which is something i'm slacking on so it definitely takes a village to get your routine and listen to other people and what works for them to help identify what what would work for you so it's it takes a community to help us out when needed it's so exciting. Well, I am so happy for you. And I will definitely tag your social media on the podcast episode. And I look forward to seeing you in three months and to see what crazy S number you give me. I'm so excited for you. Like, oh, I you. can't imagine. But you're doing great. Just whatever you're, if you're losing, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Mm-hmm. don't do anything else like don't introduce but like like don't introduce anything else to it because sometimes that kind of knocks your kilter off and then you'll stop losing well, so whatever you're doing 
I'm starting to do more weights and more weightlifting and what have you. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely going to be smacked when that muscle number comes in because I have no muscle. Like I, I am a weakling who I'm a damsel in distress when it comes to anything like heavy. Can you All believe right. your podcast is starting in a few days? You're going to be launching in a few days. I know. I'm so scared. You're actually like the second interview that mm-hmm. I've had. Yeah. The second one. So I'm, I'm super, I'm excited. I tell you, I have like probably 50 people who want to be on the podcast that I'm trying to schedule. Oh yeah. And so there's so many people there's, but my main goal is to do events. Like I'm a total event person. So I'm just really looking forward to having events and I have these ideas that I want to do and giveaways and some amazing things that I want to do and have live shows. And so definitely in the spring, we're planning that for the spring. Um, so I definitely also want to get to podcasts and meet people and get out there and get known. But I'm so excited. I, I tell you, this has changed my life. Like it's changed yours. It's, it's such a blessing to uh, have another chance. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm excited. Well, so thank you for coming. Thank you for Zoom meeting what? with me. Oh, there's another one. <gasps> there oh. is. There's a notch. 23 farming. I love great tabbies. I love him so much. I love kitty cats. Hey, I have four cats, so, and it's Hello. not, it's not my fault. My husband's a cat person too. Every, yeah, he's, he, he loves cats. How did I have four cats. We just, we just adopted a dog who's going a little crazy. We do- adopted a shepherd mastiff mix. So, yes. My, my sissy my, way. So he is, he is under a year old and he's currently at about 80 pounds. Oh, he is, God. and then we got, we got a 23 pound Maine Coon, so. He's, oh my he's God. My, my son in all the way in Italy, he has Maine Coon cats. He has two Hell. Maine Coon cats. So yours is, is it a yellow tabby or gray tabby? What does it look like? So he is a Maine Coon. He gets a little feisty because he hates uh-huh. being picked up. But so fun fact, his name was Killer in the shelter, but his owner passed away from murder. So they named him Nacho. Oh, my goodness. So, not rippers. He might end up killing us one day. And that's the rest that we're willing to Nacho. take. Nacho, yeah. you're so pretty. Oh, my goodness. I want to kiss him and hold him and pet him. He does we scratch her face off. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's gigantic. Wow. He's what a beautiful cute. cat. He's a big love. So, one well, so glad that we got to sit together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me stop. I'll stop recording. But thank you for coming, and I will see you again in three months.